Hi, my name is Arabella Loetta, and I am the Program Coordinator and Student Liaison for the Office of Experiential Learning at UD. Here with me today, I have Aaron Witherspoon, who will go ahead and introduce himself and tell a little bit about his role at UD as well. Hi, uh, I am Aaron Witherspoon. I'm the Director of uh, University Advising Initiatives and Student Success. Um, and my role here is multifaceted, but uh, really I aim to make sure that our advisors uh, have all the resources they need to help students um, and make sure that the student experience here is one that is supportive um, of all students being successful, uh, whatever success looks like, and uh, happy to be here with you today. Yeah, thank you so much for joining me. Uh, my work in the Office of Experiential Learning is mainly to help connect students with experiential learning or EL by way of facilitating reflection workshops. This year, through these workshops, we've received some questions from students about how to get involved with EL. So Aaron's really here to share one perspective of how to get involved with EL by approaching your academic advisors. So uh, Aaron, the first question I have for you is how might a student start the conversation with their advisor if they are unsure about getting involved with experiential learning or what kind of questions could they ask? Yeah, so that is a good question to start off. <laughs> so I think uh, for students, one thing I would always suggest is um, each time you speak with your advisor, um, talk about what you're doing outside of class. So it's always good to kind of bring up, you know, I, I really enjoy, you know, whatever my major is, but I'm also really interested in this outside of class. And so for some people, it might be, I'm really interested in human rights. And it doesn't matter what your major is, right? You just have a penchant for, um, for human rights, right? And so then you, from there, you can ask your advisor, um, do you know of any opportunities that might match my interests in human rights? Um, that's always a really good way to start talking about um, experiential learning opportunities um, because we have to think outside of just uh, what you're studying and, and what you're maybe it can be outside of your career path even um, or it can be within it um, but that's a good way to kind of start that conversation is what you're interested outside of class because um, a lot of times um, they can help you think about also um, you know, just different ways to uh, to get involved so Great. And what resources can advisors offer students who want to participate in experiential learning? Well, I think uh, one of the resources that advisors have is typically they will just have some knowledge of programs, um, programs and opportunities that other students that they've worked with um, have participated in. Um, I think also um, if your, uh, your advisors also may have some expertise in uh, either the field that you're passionate about or your major field, and they might be able to give you some tips on, hey, you might want to look at experiences that will um, allow you to do something like this, or when you're done with this opportunity, you will have experienced this, and this would be helpful in your career, or if you're really passionate about this, you should really try to uh, to do that. Um, also, often, I mean, uh, you know, if your um, your advisors, which many times are uh, faculty members, they often lead experiences, um, and so just speaking with them um, is always a good way um, to kind of get at what resources that they have available. Um, sometimes they often uh, will know of other um, funding opportunities as well. Um, so if there is something that you want to participate in, um, uh, but you're worried about the costs um, outside of the experiential learning uh, fund, uh, they often will know of other, uh, other sources that can help you to uh, participate in whatever it is that you're, uh, that you're looking to do. That's really great. I'm glad you brought up the cost because we definitely have received um, you know, comments and questions from students before about how they fund their experiential learning activities. If they want to do more than one, can it get kind of expensive? So um, I'm really glad that you brought that up and um, tied it to really talking to the advisors about that because they're going to have a lot of the information about the cost of certain things. And then those resources like the experiential learning fund you mentioned um, to kind of get students connected regardless of any financial situation. So uh, thank you for that. Mm -hmm. uh, my next question is, how can advisors help students who are pretty busy outside of class and can fit EL specifically into their busy schedules? 
Yeah, so I think advisors are extremely helpful here. Um, I do think that starting off though, the students, uh, the earlier you can think about when you wanna do these opportunities or you know, the earlier in the semester or the semester before uh, is really helpful for your advisor. Um, your advisor can help you think about, okay, you need this class to graduate you know, in these certain amount of semesters, but it's also offered you know, in the spring if you're looking to do something in the fall. Um, and so you can start to plan accordingly. Um, I think that's the biggest thing advisors can really help with. Um, they can kind of help you to plan out and coordinate um, if there are certain courses that are only offered in one semester and not in the other. And what you want to do is going to um, um, is going to conflict with that. Um, advisors are very uh, very good at helping you with that. Yeah. Uh, what if anything do you think students should be aware of when it comes to experiential learning? Yeah, I think I think kind of three things. So I think the first thing is experiential learning opportunities can be transformational. I mean, you can go on a trip, you can, uh, you know, do something in the community, and it can change your whole perspective on life. Um, it can help you change your career path. It can really help you to discover uh, what your passion is, what your vocation is. Um, it, it can be transformational. And so I encourage every student, um, when it's possible, to really try and do something, even if it doesn't have to be on a grand scale and you're going to Antarctica or anything like that. Um, it can be something local, um, but it really, it can be transformational for you. I think the second thing is that um, if you think about EL in kind of two different ways, the first thing is it can be something that you're just passionate about. Like we talked about a little bit earlier, right? If you're passionate about uh, community action and you're an English major, that's fine. You should pursue it, right? Um, and then also, if you can look at opportunities that are directly related to whatever career field you want to get into as well. Um, both of those are, uh, are great experiences. And when you think about if you're doing something that's related to your career field or what your major is, that's going to be applying skills and knowledge that you're learning in the classroom. And that also can be very transformational. Um, in helping you uh, to have a great experience, but really see, okay, these things that I'm learning, that these skills and these techniques that I'm learning in the classroom, technical skills, um, here's how I apply them. And that can be really helpful. And I think the last thing is every experience you have is uh, going to be valuable in terms of a learning experience. Sometimes you will learn, I never want to do this again. Or, you know, like, and that's okay. That's actually really powerful, right? Because some, we don't always just learn when something is just such this great experience and we want to tell everyone about it. Sometimes we learn from those things where, um, you know, we do them, but we're like, ah, you know, that was a good experience, but I, I never want to do that again. That's okay too. That is, that's a, that's a part of college. I think that is underrated um, is figuring out what you don't want to do, so. Yeah, I love that. And I think as a student, and from my perspective, I kind of wish that, you know, someone would have told me or even would have asked sooner about like getting involved in certain things and kind of what to look out for, because we all have experiences that we didn't necessarily love that we still learn from. But um, mm -hmm. I think just being prepared and ready for that um, is something that I definitely hold on to and value a little bit more now as I get closer to kind of graduating and planning what comes next than I did maybe when I even started college. So, mm -hmm. um, and then the last question I have for you is based on your experience with working uh, with advisors, do you have any other insights or um, advice for students that you'd like to share? Yeah, I, I, you know, my, uh, my advice would just be talk with your advisors. Um, you don't have to talk with them just when you need your uh, advising code, right? Talk to them about um, some of the things that you're interested in. Um, you know, your advisor is definitely there when you're going through challenging times, absolutely. And we want you to reach out early and often when there's something wrong. Uh, but you can also share your great experiences too. You can share your triumphs. Um, you know, you can start talking about um, different experiences that you want to have. And if you're stuck and you're like, I want to do something, but I don't know what, talk with your advisor. Um, they'll be happy to speak with you and kind of help to uh, help guide you in a, in a direction that uh, 
that's going to be beneficial for you. So. Yes. Well, thank you so much. And yeah, get in touch with your advisors about participating in experiential learning. Uh, these were some great steps and kind of an outline to how to do so. So if you have any questions, please feel free to reach out to the Office of Experiential Learning. And if you want to be in the loop about what opportunities are available to students, uh, there is a student newsletter that we send out that you can subscribe to on our website. Thanks.